In this video, we'll create this Imagaji 3D icon effect and we will use After Effects, so no 3D programs. And if you want to download this project file, join the masterclass because I will post it there. Link is in the description down below. And if you just want to download the assets, you can do that too by joining the Discord. Again, link in the description. Now let's jump into it. First to show you the video where it came from, I think the video is offline already, but here we can see the example. The icons will pop up like this and it's completely in 3D. It's a really cool effect and I also see Iman using using more 3D effects or his editors using more 3D effects. Now I'm almost 100% sure that this is made in Blender or Cinema 4D. So we will never be able to make it look like it exactly. That being said, I think we can get really close and also it's so nice to just use After Effects. First things first, we need to download these icons or get these icons. And a great way to do that is looking on free pick and then just searching for the icon. So box icon, for example, pen icon. And what is really important is that they are a similar style. So here we have the box icon and here I have the dollar sign and here I have the pen tool. Now they're not exactly the same as Eman, but what I do want to say, if you search for icons, make sure that they are really similar to each other. So if you go for a filled style where it's just black in the in the middle, then just make sure that all the icons are also filled. Now, ideally you want them in SVG, but you need premium for that. You can also just download them as PNG and I will show you what to do next in After Effects. Let's create a new composition in After Effects, just 4K, 25 per frames per second, 3D icons. There we go. I got all my icons imported. And as you can see, they're here. I'm just gonna drag them over so you can see them all. Now select the layer and go to layer auto trace. Just press OK and let's see what happens. Then after you auto trace it, you can see that masks have been created. But we don't want that, we want shapes. And there's a good trick to this. I'm gonna show you how. We're gonna go to layer new and then shape layer. Then we'll open up the contents and we're gonna add two paths. So one, two. And we do that because there's two masks and we also need two paths for that. Uh, there's two shapes. You have the pen top and you have the pen bottom. What we can do is open up the path and open up the path too. So we're gonna copy over the mask path by pressing Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows and then just pasting it on there. And we're gonna do that with the bottom one too. Let's paste it on there too. And you can see this pen appear. That's good, but we don't see it yet. And that's because we need to add a fill too. So we go to add and then fill and there you go. Now we can delete our pen tool and we basically have a factorized shape which we can turn into a 3D layer later on. Now we just have to do this with the other layers. So three, two, one. And there we go, we have three layers that are all vectorized and all uh, basically shapes. Now, if you have SVGs or vectorized files, this is way easier. You can just right click on it and create shapes from vector layer. I'm just gonna turn the box and dollar off. So we have just the pen and now we're gonna create our diamond shape. We do that by selecting nothing. And then I'm just gonna turn on some guides. So let's go to window and then ruler. So let's go to view and then show rulers. Let's put this in the center. Let's turn off transparency so we can see what we're doing. And as you can see, it's in the middle. And I did that by just moving it and then you can align it on the icon or you can just see if it's on 1920 pixels. I'm gonna do the same and create a crosshair, basically a middle. We can put that on 1080 so we have a center. Now you can also right click a guide and press edit position and then you can type it in to really center it. And here to 1080, 1080, okay. And now we go to view and then lock guides. Now make sure nothing is selected and then we're just gonna create our diamond shape. And the best way to do this is by using the rectangle first. I'm just gonna drag out a, a square like this and we'll make sure you hold shift to drag it out like this. Then in my properties panel, I'm just gonna, in my properties panel, I'm just gonna put the rotation on 45 degrees, then open the rectangle, open the rectangle path, and then right click on the rectangle path and convert it to a Bezier path. And what this does is this makes sure that we can edit the points. So now we're gonna really align it. We're gonna use the selection tool and I'm just gonna move it to the center, perfect. Now you can also go to align and then align it in the center that way. And now we can literally just move it a bit in and just make sure that it's the right size and the right shape. We can adjust it like this and let's put it beneath our pen, see what it looks like. I think this is quite cool. I think it is a bit too big. We can always adjust where the pen will be, but I do like the shape of the layer. Now, one thing we need to do is duplicate this and we're first gonna name this diamond inside. 
We're gonna duplicate it and we're gonna call this diamond outside. And this will all make sense in a bit. I'm just gonna remove the stroke of the bottom one by selecting it and then going to stroke. And then on the top one, I want the fill to be on none. So I go to fill and then none. And then the stroke, I want to be quite high. Now the color, you need to just adjust it a bit, uh, whatever you like. I have this pale red now, but we can also make it blue or like a darker blue. I think that's quite cool. Let's select that. And then the inside, make sure that it's the same color. Uh, so let's just paste that and okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the pen the same color too. Press okay. We're gonna make it 3D. And now one thing you need to make sure is that your 3D is set to advanced 3D. You can also use Cinema 4D, but that's not available for every version, but you do need advanced 3D. Now you will see that nothing really happened except our shape has disappeared. And the first thing I'm gonna make sure is that the pen and the diamond outside are linked to the diamond inside. We're gonna open the diamond inside and the uh, geometry options. And I'm gonna make sure that there's an extrusion depth. So we're just gonna increase the extrusion depth and you think nothing has happened, but something has happened. Because what we can do now is press R for rotation and let's rotate the layer a bit. And as you can see, it has become 3D. There's been an extrusion happening. So we're gonna open it again and I'm gonna go into the geometry options and I'm gonna increase the extrusion even more. Maybe to something like 100, 150, that's cool. Now let's open the diamond outside and I'm gonna do the same with this. So I'm gonna just go into the extrusion depth and also turn this up to 150. Now, one thing I'm gonna change here is gonna change the bevel style to convex and then type in the bevel depth maybe 200 and this will make it rounded we can even increase this to 200 if you want to maybe 100 is already a bit too much but uh, maybe 50 i'll keep it at 100 and then let's move the diamond outside so we press p for position and then we'll just increase the z depth to the front and as you can see it will create this depth effect now let's rotate it back so press r for rotation on the diamond inside and let's just press it or set it to zero so we can see the front. And what I don't like is that the outer border is way too much. We can just decrease the stroke by setting it to 30 pixels or maybe even 20 pixels. And you can basically adjust the extrusion a bit like this. Now let's go into the pen tool, go into the geometry options again, and also increase this extrusion depth, maybe to around, I would say 50. Now just press P for position on the pen and let's move it a bit to the front. Now I'm gonna turn the icon again so I can see it a bit more clear. Let's move it out a bit, something like this. And I'm also gonna press S for scale because I don't want it touching the borders. So something like this. Now if you want, you can even add a convex to the pen layer. And this will basically make sure that it's like smooth on the edges. You don't have to, this is a personal stylistic choice. And if you're in Cinema 4D render mode, then you can even dial it down even further. But this will do for now. I'm just gonna make sure that the rotation is set to zero again, and I'm just gonna add a light. So we go to layer new light, and let's just add a spot for now and press okay. Now let's open our spot, let's open our light options. And here you can change the intensity, the fall off, make sure that the fall off is set to none in the beginning, because then it's just a bit easier to move it around. I'm just gonna go into transform and then I'm gonna adjust the position a bit and I'm just gonna turn it around a bit, maybe increase the intensity, maybe a bit from the top. I'm gonna move it out like that. I'm not the biggest fan of this color, but we can adjust the color if, you, if we want to. This hurts my eyes a bit. I'm gonna turn the transparency on so I can see what's happening here. And then I'm just gonna add a layer new and then again, a light. And I'm just gonna use a point for now. I think that works fine. Let's press P for position and we can center it in the middle a bit and then just drag it out so it's more to the front. For now, I'm gonna go to view and I'm gonna disable show guides because that really bothers me. And now what we're gonna do is change the material options because we want to have it a bit shiny and also to make it pop. And we can even, if you want to, uh, change the fill of the pen to maybe a bit of a lighter color or even white to really make it pop. So when we press OK, as you can see, it really stands out now. I'm also going to go to the diamond outside and I'm just going to make that a bit more shiny. So you can go into the diamond outside and then go into the material options. And here you have specular shininess and you can increase that to make it more shiny. Do be careful with this. Don't increase it too much. 
otherwise it will become like this metalish and really harsh you can just increase this a bit you can also play a bit with the metal and we can also play with the spot it's now quite white we can make it more angled and you do that by adjusting the cone angle now this is quite cool again we can change the colors later on but for now we're gonna animate it and i'm gonna do that by just pressing p for position and setting a keyframe and pressing r for rotation and setting a keyframe on the y axis now press u to see all your keyframes and move them out a bit and let's move this layer down and then setting the wipe rotation on 90. I do think our extrusion is a bit too much actually, maybe minus 90. And then of course, select the keyframes, right click, easy ease, and just open the curve editor. You can also press F9 as a keyboard shortcut, but now we're just gonna select the last keyframe and we're gonna move that over. So it's gonna be a bit more smooth. Press the position and I'm just gonna do the same thing. And let's see what this looks like. This looks really cool. I really like the effect. I think it's so cool. And you can do this with any shape or any icon. It really adds value to your animation. Now, of course we need to do this with the other layers too, but it's exactly the same. So it's just repeating the same thing, except what we can do now is of course duplicate the diamonds. So I'll just show you quickly how to do that. You just duplicate them. You go to layer new, null object, and we're just gonna link the diamond inside too to the null object. So when we move this null object now to the left, so we press P for position, make sure that it's 3D, then we can move it over and it will move over our diamond shape. We can also press S for scale uh, to make sure that it's maybe a bit smaller and makes it a bit more luxurious. And of course, with the other shapes, it's exactly the same like we did with the pen. You just enable them, make sure they're 3D, make sure they're linked to the right diamond, make sure they're sticking out a bit by pressing P for position. I'm gonna change the color again, scaling it down a bit. And as you can see, the null object moves this. And of course, I do have to add some depth to it in the geometry options. Now, or we can duplicate the light or we can keep it like this. And of course, I do have to offset the animation. And we do that by just moving the layer. So everything is linked to the diamond inside too. So if I move this, it will be offset by a bit. And then you will get something like this. Again, join the masterclass to get more lessons like this, but also to download the project file of this tutorial again thanks for all the support you guys make me so happy don't forget to subscribe and then i'll see you next time bye